Caroline, your company, Seven Shift, um, uses findings from behavioral science to improve people's working lives. In doing so, you're bridging the gap between academic theory and practice, which is sometimes called the academic practitioner divide. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to bridge this gap and make this connection? My clients, to be honest. I was working in organizational behavior, organizational change at McKinsey, the consulting firm. And the work that I was doing was often, in, in, it often involved helping people be at their best in some way, or helping their teams be at their best, or the organization. And I found a couple of things. One was that the use of a little bit of behavioral science, and I mean just really a little bit, would often be transformative in terms of their understanding of what was possible, and indeed what was required of them as leaders quite often. And the second thing that I noticed was that things that I guess you and I would assume everybody knows, just really basic things about fear responses and risk taking and so on, really aren't common knowledge. So I found time and again that people would find um, quite basic ideas, quite transformative, quite powerful, and then they would say, where is this written down in a way that shows me how to run a meeting differently or handle my email differently. And so there was that gap. I was giving them these tools and techniques and explaining the science underneath it, but, uh, but yes, it felt that there was perhaps a, a gap for uh, a, a bit more of a systemic approach, possibly even a book. Mm. Great. Um, so what were the challenges of turning this academic research into practical mm. advice? Well, I mean, you, you talked about bridging the gap. You really are suspending yourself between the two worlds. So you've got to find a way of making the science as simple as possible without being simplistic. And that means, you know, to be honest, I'm not going to talk to people about the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. I mean, I could, but it will probably mean that they'll start checking their email. Um, you know, the debates on priming research and where the mirror neurons exist and so on, these things are fascinating, but they're not directly germane to what people need or want to know. So there's definitely a job of, of simplifying, but then of course as soon as you simplify, you run the risk of annoying the academics who've done the excellent cutting edge work in the field. So you have to accept that you know, you're going to be a little bit academic compared with some practitioners, and you have to accept that you're going to come off as perhaps a little simplistic compared with the academics, and you have to accept that there's a, there's a reason for being in that space, and um, hope that you can explain as best as possible to both sides the value of what you're doing. Has it, um, has it taken time for you to find the right balance? Oh yeah, I think you know when I did start coaching and consulting using using behavioral science, I just you know I kind of wanted to share what I knew a little bit, <laughs> um, and I learned over time that there was a real benefit to you know using Occam's razor and thinking okay what what do they actually need to know, um, and you know when you think about the advances that take place uh, in in all disciplines that one might put under the umbrella of behavioral science, you also have to be quite careful because. You know, things move on. So what we know about dopamine now is not what we were saying five years ago. We know it's a much more complex role uh, that it plays in the brain. Um, and so you know, people say, oh, that's, that's about dopamine, isn't it? Well, not exactly like that. And so you've just you've got to kind of pitch it. You've got to find a place to pitch it. Um, and yeah, it took me a little while to kind of go and get that right, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, so do you have any tips for others who want to bridge this gap? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, in some ways it's obvious because what you want to do is you want to get, if you're coming from an academic perspective, you want to get as much practical experience as possible and vice versa. So um, I know one neuroscientist at UCL who actually attended a, a really rigorous coaching training program because he was interested in seeing how neuroscience might be applied in the coaching world, just like I am. But he's, you know, he is a really, um, renowned neuroscientist. And so that was his way of starting to make the transition that way. I thought that was wonderful, really smart. Um, and then the other way around, if you're a practitioner like me, um, you know, an autodidact, you, you might say, I think it's, it's fine to read around the subject, but it really helps to get some courses under your belt that give you a structure for your reading. So, you know, yeah. I'm an economist by background. I'm not a neuroscientist, I'm not a psychologist. 
Um, and I found it really helpful to do a couple of courses that just gave me a frame for what I was learning. Um, so, so yes, I suppose that's what I would suggest. Either side you're coming from. And of course, it's even better if you actually have some time really truly in the middle where you're a practitioner drawing on the science. But that's how I get started on either side. Great. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.